Good morning, dear teachers. Let me introduce myself. I am a teacher of English at Nazarbayev Intellectual School of Physics and Math in Simi. Today I will conduct an online seminar on the topic Effective Ways of Assessing Students' Achievements at the English Lesson on the topic Natural Disasters in Grade 7. This online seminar consists of two parts. Part 1 is a theoretical part. Part 2 is more practical one. The goal of the seminar is to introduce the theoretical basis of assessment in class, discuss stages of formative assessment in class, and provide formative assessment tools in class. Part 1. Lesson planning is the most essential part of the teaching process. It helps us to model the lesson in advance and make it happen in real classroom environment. Lesson planning affects all the spheres of the pedagogical practice of the teacher, such as defining the learning objectives, selecting the right and adequate activities, learning outcomes, students' achievements and progress, the teacher's own analysis and reflection. Lesson planning is the key for the teacher to be effective at a certain lesson as well as during the whole teaching process. The lesson planning should begin with the learning objective for the lesson. Teacher should fully understand the learning objectives for the given grade. Then he should make up expected outcomes for the lesson, taking into account the learning needs of certain students, previous learning background, and the results of the previous formative assessment. On the given slide, you can see the lesson planning cycle. As it was mentioned at the lesson, the lesson planning begins with learning objectives. Creating learning objectives can be time consuming. Most of us have been exposed to the importance of learning objectives, but we are not always confident in creating them. Learning objectives create a metric for measuring what behavioral change will exist after the training is completed. Great training programs are driven by well thought out learning objectives that meet two criteria. The first, the learning must be observable in the learning event. It means that learners must be able to demonstrate that they can perform each learning objective. The second, the learning must be measurable, meaning the learners must be tested on what they've learned. Then the teacher clarifies the expected outcomes for the lesson. Learning outcomes state what students will know or be able to do as a result of a lesson plan or activity. Effective learning outcomes are relevant to student needs, consistent, teaching practical content that students can use in their everyday lives, able to clear and specifically communicate an action and impact, achievable in terms of time and resources, and available. Next go teaching strategies to achieve the expected outcomes. Teachers need a repertoire of teaching strategies to provide to promote learning and develop understanding. They also require a wide variety of techniques to engage pupils act actively. The nature of the learning objective will determine when it would be appropriate to use each strategy within an episode of the lesson. Classroom assessment is an ongoing process throughout the whole lesson. Teachers who develop useful assessments provide corrective instruction and give students second chances to demonstrate success can improve the instruction and help students learn. Reflection and feedback are an essential element of the learning process. 
in its many forms. They allow students to reflect on their learning, clarify areas where students can improve, and provide students the opportunity to self-assess their skills and capabilities. Feedback can be provided individually or to groups, not only by academic staff, but by self-assessment of fellow students. An effective lesson gets students thinking and allows them to interact and ask questions, tap into their background knowledge, and build new skills. Part 2. The lesson in grade 7 is on the topic natural disasters. The speaking learning objective is to use appropriate subject-specific vocabulary and syntax to talk about a limited range of general topics and some curricular topics. Before talking about some practical assessment tools which teachers can use at the lesson, let's clarify some questions. Learners need to know and understand the following before learning can take place. What is the aim of the learning? What are the specific aspects to be learned? Why do they need to learn it? Where are they in terms of achieving the learning objective? That is, what prior learning is there? How can they achieve the aim? Classroom assessment, what is it? Classroom assessment is both a teaching approach and a set of techniques. The approach is that the more you know about what and how students are learning, the better you can plan learning activities to structure your teaching. Why are formative assessment strategies used? Formative assessment strategies are used to check for understanding of student learning and to make decisions about current and future instruction. Through formative assessment, teachers can discover the rate at which students are learning, the current knowledge of students, what information or skills students still need to learn, and whether the learning opportunities they are providing for students is effective or if they need to ch change or adapt the instruction. Results of formative assessment drive instruction. If students are doing well and progressing as expected, teachers continue with their current instruction practices. If students are not progressing as expected and are missing key information or skills, teachers plan other learning objectives, other learning opportunities, to help students attain the information or skills they need to be successful. How to determine what type of formative assessment strategy to use? Deciding on what type of formative assessment strategy to use will depend on a number of factors. Teachers need to determine what aspect of student learning they want to measure. They then need to consider the learning preferences of their students. Formative assessment strategies can be given to students individually, as partners, in small groups, or as a class. The type of grouping used for the formative assessment will also influence the choice of strategy. Teachers should not rely on one type of assessment strategy. A variety of individual and group formative assessment strategies should be used. Individual strategies allow teachers to get a clear picture of what of each student and the understanding of the concept or skill being measured. Group strategies provide teachers with general information about student learning that can be used to plan instruction. Students can also use formative assessment information 
to make, make changes to their learning. How can teachers use the assessment information? Teachers use formative assessment information to assess how their current instructional strategies are working with their students. If there are students who are struggling, teachers may need to work individually with the student, present information, other ways, or adapt their current instructional strategy. Students who have appeared to master the outcome or goal being formatively assessed may need to be further assessed or have learning opportunities planned that challenge them and are designed at their level of understanding. Teachers are also able to identify misunderstandings students may have and adapt the instruction accordingly. How can students use the assessment information? Students can use formative assessment information to determine what they need to do to achieve the goals or outcomes of the unit. Students may need to adapt or to change their learning to master lesson outcomes. If students are not achieving at an expected rate, they can look at the strategies they are using for learning and decide whether they need to change their current learning strategies or adopt new ways of learning. The information provided by formative assessment strategies can also be used to help students reflect on current learning goals or set new goals. Now I'd like to talk more about some practical assessment tools which teachers can use at the lesson. Monitoring students. Monitoring is a classroom management technique loosely defined as listening to the learners for their accuracy and fluency, or checking to see whether activities are going to plan and that the learners are on task. However, monitoring is often called out as a vague listening and looking exercise by the teacher and sometimes not done at all. Whereas, in fact, effective monitoring is a skill that needs to be developed if learners are to benefit fully from activities, particularly those of the information gap and group interactive types. When to monitor? Monitoring goes on all the time, but particularly during speaking activities when the teacher is concerned with the general assessment of learners' performance in relation to general progress or recent language and skills development. Monitoring of individual learners takes place during written practice exercises when the aim is to point out errors and encourage self-correction. Guided practice activities, particularly of the pair work format, are monitored for accuracy, while less guided group work activities are monitored for task achievement and fluency. Monitoring may be general or multi-purpose, focusing on one or more aims. Not all learners develop at the same rate. Monitoring offers the opportunity to assess the progress of individuals and often provides an indication of what to reteach or practice further. Specific aims of monitoring depending on the stage of the lesson and the activity include being aware of the whole class. The teacher should always be aware of how the class is getting on, whether the pace is too fast or too slow, and which students 
may need individual attention. There is often a tendency to teach to the lesson plan and materials at the expense of teaching the learners themselves. Listening for errors in the target language, particularly during guided practice activities. Correction is required here, since there are usually accuracy-based activities. Listening to ensure that learners are on task. Some re-instruction, modeling of the activity, or prompting may be required. Taking opportunities for micro-teaching to individuals or pairs who have clearly not grasped the target language. Assessing both individuals and the whole class. Monitoring provides clues to individual and group difficulties and progress. In this respect, monitoring is a kind of ongoing needs analysis. All students should receive some attention, even if it is only a few words of encouragement. Assessing the task. Some activities work better with one class than another. Others are being tried out for the first time. Monitoring offers the teacher the opportunity to assess the success of an activity activity and to get feedback from the learners. How to monitor? Monitoring is an acquired skill which hopefully becomes a good habit. Less experienced teachers may feel that they need to monitor closely and maintain control of activities while other teachers feel that they should be involved at all times and that monitoring is the solution. In either case, there is a danger of over-monitoring, interference at a tense rather than relaxed, student-centered learning environment during less guided practice activities.
Close monitoring needs to be carried out sensitively. And an element of personal and cultural awareness is required. Some learners resent a very close physical presence. Others object to the teacher crouching in front of them. Monitoring from in front of the learners is distracting and sometimes intrusive, tending to interrupt the activity and shifting the focus onto the teacher. Students then expect the teacher to provide some input, make a comment or correct them. Unobtrusive monitoring is most effective and is often best done from behind the learners. Some useful tips for monitoring students. Make sure that there is a clear route around the classroom. Arrange seating so that all students are visible from wherever the teacher is positioned. Monitor pairs or groups randomly. Don't spend too much time with one individual, pair or group. And make sure that all learners are monitored. Rather than standing or crouching, sit with pairs or groups. In conclusion, it should be noted that careful monitoring guarantees the best performance from the learners and provides the most instructive feedback for the teacher.
What is Plickers? Plickers is an assessment tool made by a teacher who was looking for a quick and simple way to check student understanding. This assessment tool allows teachers to collect on the spot formative assessment data without the need to have students use devices or paper and pencil. Teachers can use this tool with previous learning, previous planning, or on the go as needed. This tool provides teachers with the data needed to inform their instruction. It provides students with the opportunity to participate and engage in learning without feeling self-conscious, says Plickers.com. It's a data collection tool that's helpful for teachers and fun for the students. Plickers is not just a fun online assessment tool for students, but it's also fun and simple to use for teachers. Plickers allow you to check students' understanding. With the data collected, you can inform your instruction for a follow-up class or in real time. Students stay engaged as they watch to see if their card was scanned and their answer displayed. Students of all ages find Plickers fun and easy to use. Plickers can help teachers to start or end class in a meaningful, engaging manner so long as the teacher creates insightful, thoughtful questions. To conduct a poll, a teacher creates a question and projects them on the board. Students hold up their custom response cards. Each card is different, turning the cards in different orientations to indicate the answers. The teacher holds up a device, such as an iPad or Android device, and scans students' responses, which are recorded. Responses can be automatically projected on the screen in the classroom, and teachers can track each student's responses over time. Plickers also offers a score sheet where student responses are collected. These responses can be color coded and referenced for further instructional decisions per class or individual student. Plickers can be a valuable polling tool for teachers with limited tech in their classrooms. Over Plickers addresses the critical need for teachers to rapidly get a sense of students' progress and adjust accordingly. This tool shines in its ability to not place spotlights on nervous students who wouldn't normally respond in class discussions. The teacher can produce a less intimidating assessment that would still allow for interventions as needed. It's not the flashiest rapid response tool out there, but it could be a useful and engaging tool in a teacher's arsenal for classes that need a little extra push to participate. Please show your answer, please. Show your card. Only one, one card, only one card. Hurry. Chance. 
take off B bring about C come across and D back into. Come. Okay, come. do it individually. Give your own answer. Please. Show your answer, please. Students' reflection is an eff effective way to inspire and enhance dialogue between the teacher and student. So often, students are hesitant to ask essential questions or engage in important conversation with the teacher. Through lesson reflections, they have the opportunity to ask questions and share information through written dialogue. Through written reflections, Students often share things that confuse them about the content of the lesson. They asked extended questions about the lesson's objectives or sought clarification on information shared during lessons. In addition, students occasionally reached out for support or encouragement. For example, I noticed the student was not quite himself in class, but I couldn't identify the problem. In his reflection, he shared that there was trouble at home and family turmoil was causing him to fall behind in his work. Consequently, I was to provide him assistance and support in class. Students' reflections provide them opportunity to grow in their content knowledge, metacognition and self-awareness, and so strengthen a sense of class community. In addition, to providing insight into the teacher's own classroom instruction, it gives the teacher a chance to really know and appreciate the diversity within each of middle level learners. Their reflections demonstrate the many aspects of learning and development taking place in the middle school classroom every day. Student reflection on learning is a powerful tool in any middle level classroom. Metacognition is thinking about thinking. It is an increasingly useful mechanism to enhance student learning, both for immediate outcomes and for helping students to understand their own learning processes. 
So metacognition is a broad concept that refers to the knowledge and thought processes regarding own, own learning. There is research evidence that metacognition is a teachable skill that is central to other skills sets such as problem solving, decision making, and critical thinking. Reflective thinking as a component of metacognition is the ability to reflect critically on learning experiences and processes in order to inform future progress. It is important to highlight strategies which might better encourage metacognition. Exit tickets are an opportunity for middle school learners to reflect on what they have accomplished and what they could improve on. Exit tickets are family of feedback tools that students complete for a few minutes at the end of each lesson. They prompt students to think about how and what they learn, as well as what challenges they are still facing. Traffic lights is a simple way and effective exit ticket which emphasizes three factors. When students encourage a challenge, students have thought differently about something, and when students are learning well. So, the goal of today's seminar was to introduce the theoretical basis of assessment in class, discuss stages of formative assessment in class, and provide formative assessment tools in class. I hope that this online seminar was useful for teachers, and they will use formative assessment tools at their lessons. In conclusion, I have to say, the model that says learn while you are at school, while you are young, the skills that you will apply during your lifetime is no longer tenable. The skills that you can learn when you are at school will not be applicable. The one really competitive skill is the skill of being able to learn. It is the skill of being able not to give the right answer to questions about what you were taught in school, but to make the right response to situations that are outside the scope of what you were taught in school. Thank you for your attention.